Well, howdy! It is the 1st of February, 2023. Eric Grandstrom filling in for Dan Kuntz here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley as we get you uh, ready for a Tuesday, or no, Wednesday. It's Wednesday, yeah, right? Hump day. There we go. Oh, that means it's also a special day here for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. It's Winning Wednesday. <laughs> Now, I was looking through the copious notes that Dan Koontz left me, which were none, by the way. Uh, winning Wednesday, today we have Wenatchee Wild tickets. It, uh, they're vouchers for tickets, so you could use them uh, for the rest of this season. Uh, they're not home this weekend, they're going to be home the following weekend. Uh, so you've got, I think, what, about seven, eight games left of the regular season to use these vouchers. So all you have to do is email us at uh, winning at ncwlife.com. That, Winner. Oh, winner. That's right. Winner. Here, let me... Oh, I did write that down right. <laughs> I just didn't read it right. Winner at ncwlife.com. Uh, we will collect those and we will announce the winner later today. Is that right? Is that how we do that? You're right? Later today? Okay. All right. So, <laughs> uh, Winning Wednesday is today and uh, it's going to be a great start to a new month and a chance to win here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. So, we have that for you. We also have, strangely, uh, my dad is going to be on the show. Now, why is it strange? I knew he was going to be on the show. It was my idea to have him on the show. Dad was here a couple weeks ago to help me with a wrestling match broadcast here on the NCW Life Channel. I said, hey, why don't you come on by the studio? We'll sit down. We'll talk. And so that talk is coming up later on this morning. I will warn you right now, there is some colorful verbiage that's used uh, in the end, towards the end of that conversation. So just kind of a uh, uh, parental guidance suggested. <laughs> <laughs> before we talk about the weather, before we talk about news, before we get to Mike McNaughty, before we do sports, let's uh, take a look around our weather window this morning. You're not going to see a lot. Uh, it is an overcast start to the day. Uh, you can see uh, quite a bit there, actually, from our Wenatchee Heights camera looking down upon the valley this morning. And, uh, yeah, you can tell there's a little more daylight to today than yesterday. And that's kind of the theme as we're on the upswing towards spring. First day of February, uh, pitchers and catchers report in just, what, 11, 12 days for the Mariners. So that's uh, some pretty good news. So good morning to Wenatchee East Wenatchee. Welcome to your Wednesday and the first day of February. I, I have no idea what happened in January. Sheet, gone. 31 days in the books. We're already into the second month of the year. Our second camera is going to show us a little, uh, oh, I guess light has come. Boy, between the time that Uriah previewed these for me, just 10, 15 minutes ago, we've got a lot more daylight here. This is looking down at the new bridge in Kashmir. Uh, so good morning. And you can see light traffic heading on Highway 2, a little more coming east than heading west. But be careful on that commute this morning. Looks like the roads are in pretty good shape. And uh, hello, Kashmir. We're going to get another vision of Kashmir. Uh, camera two here. This is looking from, is this the one that's at Appalachian's? Yeah, okay. So this is Apple uh, the, on the hill above Appalachian's looking towards the west. And you can see in the foreground there the lovely Ville of Kashmir, home of the Bulldogs. And uh, I think uh, Kashmir winners last night in sports, so we'll talk about that coming up in a little bit. But a good morning. And you can see our uh, cascades in the distance there and the enchantments kind of shrouded in clouds and fog. And it's kind of the theme for the day. Camera four from our local tell SkyFi Wireless Network. Believe it or not, that is Leavenworth. The, it's not the Catskills. That is Leavenworth uh, this morning. You can see just a little bit of the edge of town there. Uh, from our camera above Leavenworth. Thanks to SkyFi Wireless Network for our camera view this morning around the valley. And uh, as far as the weather is concerned, first before we get to our local forecast, we'll see what the National Weather Service is talking about. Uh, for the month of February, so an outlook for February, they're saying that the temperatures are going to be below normal and the precipitation will be above normal. Uh, especially, well, the precip for the East Coast and uh, for our neck of the woods. So that uh, La Nina continues here for the Northwest and for the West Coast. So temperatures will be a little cooler and a little more uh, precipitation on the way. Now, will that fall in form of snow or rain? I'm not sure about that, but we do have our forecast and it's brought to you by Apple Valley Honda. Thanks to Apple Valley Honda for sponsoring the weather here on the NCW Life Channel. Now, as far as our forecast is concerned, there you have it. Cloudy skies for the day today and a high of 29, so we're still below normal. 
19 for our overnight low tonight, and that's kind of where we've been the last couple of nights. Uh, tomorrow's forecast looking at clouds and 32 as we slowly start to warm up. By Friday, we'll see highs around 35. A little bit of rain or a few snowflakes in the morning, depending on your elevation. It will warm up uh, later in the day Friday with that. If it does start to snow, it will turn to rain, at least for the valley floor. Then the weekend forecast, overcast, a little bit of rain and temperatures warming up still. 39 for Saturday, 40 for Sunday. Nighttime low is going to be down in the freezing area, so maybe a few of those rain showers could come in the form of snowflakes. But like you see, it's warming up. And then Monday, uh, 44 for our high. That could be uh, nipping in the record territory by Monday. We'll have to see about that. Overnight lows above freezing by the first part of next week. But the clouds kind of here for the duration. Now, the high yesterday for Wenatchee was 26. The overnight low, 17. Normally, we're at 37 and 26. So we're still about 10, 12 uh, degrees above or below where we should be this time of year. The record high was set just uh, three years ago in, in uh, 2020. It was 57 degrees. Remember that? We had green grass showing through. Uh, back in February of 2020. The record low, it was a record uh, number of days in 1996, minus 10. Ooh. I'm glad we're not there. Sunrise this morning officially at 727. Sun will set tonight at 503. Tomorrow morning at 725 and set tomorrow night at 504. So a couple of two, three uh, minutes of daylight extended to your day. Now, as far as the mountain passes are concerned, if you need to travel to the west side, it's a good day to do so. Bear and dry for the most part. There is a traction advisory on Stevens Pass. Uh, no restrictions for Blewett or Snoqualmie with just overcast conditions. So we are off to a chilly start in Wenatchee with a temperature of 18 degrees outside the studios here of uh, the NCW Life Channel. Again, Winning Wednesday is on tap. A chance to win with Angie Wild vouchers for tickets for whatever you want to go to. Uh, they're back home not this weekend, but the following weekend. And then they've got weekends uh, spread throughout the rest of the season here at home at the Town Toyota Center. So all you have to do is email us winning no, winner. I keep wanting to put winning. Winner, winner, W-I-N-N-E-R, at ncwlife.com. That's your chance to win with Winning Wednesday. We will take a break, come back, get you the latest local news coming up next here on Wake Up with Angie Valley. I had had a seizure in the middle of the night and they rushed me to the hospital and decided um, to induce labor to try to get the baby out of the outpouring of love and support I got from Confluence Health. My coworkers coming to the ICU to be with me. For me, it's the work family. It's just incredible to have support no matter what I'm going through in my personal life, my, my own health. Nineteen eighty nine I moved here in July. My dad farmed, my my brother still on the family farm. I worked for a dealer in Liston, Idaho. I was his general sales manager. My boss goes, I got a guy that may be ready for a store. We made one trip here and that's how I ended up here. I'd never been here in my life and I had no friends here. I have nothing, you know. I do now. I have a lot of friends here. I mean this is my home. I love living here. Wednesday edition of Wake Up with Angie Valley continues in for Dan Kuntz. I'm Eric Grandstrom with your latest local news. Cloudy skies in the forecast. Temperatures in the upper 20s today. We're at 18 in downtown Wenatchee. Well, a former Eastmont soccer coach was sentenced Monday to five years in prison for raping one of the student athletes he mentored. 40-year-old Christian Florencio Barboza coached girls soccer for Eastmont High School between 2005 and 2010. He was found guilty of raping a 14-year-old student on multiple occasions during that period. At the time, Barboza was in his early to mid-20s. The survivor testified against him at his bench trial in Douglas County Superior Court. Barboza still faces trial next month on another charge of third-degree child rape for another assault allegedly committed against the same victim in Chelan County. He remains jailed in Wenatchee. A uh, Leavenworth area man who broke into uh, vacant cabins and vacation homes and then sold stolen goods was sentenced Monday to about two and a half years in prison. 34-year-old Kevin Michael Waters pleaded guilty to six felony counts, including four counts of burglary. Once freed from prison, Waters must serve another two and a half years on supervised release. Waters was arrested on a warrant last July in Ponderay County 
Authorities say he was involved in stealing about $50,000 worth of property from properties around Leavenworth and Lake Wenatchee, as well as the Leavenworth Ski Hill Lodge. An alleged accomplice, 32-year-old Jesse Andrew Reeder, is charged with storing stolen items from those burglaries and still awaits trial. Well, a motorist who struck and injured two bicyclists on a Douglas County Highway last year has died, leading to the end of the vehicular assault case against her. Lania Frankkoff, age 39, died December at her home in Helena, Montana, while awaiting trial on charges of vehicular assault and DUI. The Washington State Patrol says Frankkoff drove onto the shoulder of Highway 28 last March and struck two Tacoma men who were among a group of eight cyclists traveling near Palisades Road. Both suffered injuries, including a fractured pelvis, broken shin bone, lacerations, and concussion. No cause of Frank Comp's death was disclosed. Douglas County prosecutors officially closed the court case against her this past week. In other news, this morning, almost 340 acres of wild habitat in Okanagan County will move into state fish and wildlife stewardship. The department's Board of Commissioners approved a measure Friday to buy 339 acres to add to the Sin Lahican Wildlife Area south of Tenasket. The agency will pay about $1.3 million for the acquisition. The purchase should help protect significant shrub step and riparian habitat, which are important to mule deer and salmon populations. The property will also be open for recreational opportunities, including hunting, fishing, and wildlife viewing. Well, the city of Ellensburg and Grant County are two of 16 Washington communities that will receive federal grants to help reverse a statewide increase in traffic fatalities. The Department of Transportation awarded over $9 million to Washington State communities through Senator Maria Cantwell's Safe Streets for All program. Canwell, who is the chair of the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, said the program will provide the funding needed to improve transportation safety planning and build infrastructure that will save lives. The city of Ellensburg will receive $160,000 in funding and Grant County will receive $280,000. According to a press release from Cantwell's office, 2022 saw the most traffic fatalities in over 30 years with a total of 745. Well, state representatives from the 12th District are inviting residents to join them for a virtual town hall this evening. House legislators Mike Steele and Keith Ganner will give an update on the 2023 legislative session and offer a chance for participants to ask questions live. The online event starts at 6 o'clock tonight on Zoom with pre-registration required. You can sign up at the web address seen on your screen and pre-submit your question during the registration process. Well, the U.S. Air Force Colonel Sarah Babbitt has been announced as the Grand Marshal of the 1000, or 104th Washington State Apple Blossom Festival. Babbitt is both an Eastmont High School and Washington State University graduate. She has served 23 years in the U.S. Air Force and is currently Vice Commander of Space uh, Base Delta One in Colorado. Babbitt will be the guest speaker at the All Service Club and Community Luncheon on Wednesday, May 3rd. And then on Saturday, May 6th, she will ride in the Stumilt Grand Parade as its Grand Marshal. Congratulations to her. Speaking of apple blossom, we are just a week and a little bit away from the pageant coming your way. We'll have that here on the NCW Life Channel. Also, of course, more local news coming up tonight on the NCW Life Channel. Grant Olson has our preview. Grant? Good morning, Eric. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, a slow warm-up in our temperature begins today with highs above normal this weekend. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric has results of last night's area high school basketball action. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope you'll join us then. Eric? All right, thank you much, Grant. And if you'd like to drop us a line to tell us what's happening in your world or if you have a breaking story that our news staff needs to know about, you can do so many ways. You can email us at news at ncwlife.com. You can also reach out on our news tip line at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6275. Uh, you can also, or 6295, I should say. I don't know how I got that one wrong. Uh, you can also get us uh, directly through our website at ncwlife.com, and that's also where you'll find the latest news and sports information information right there. We will take a break at 15 minutes past the hour and get you sports news coming up next year on Wake Up with Anchi Valley.
Come on, I'm a certified technician. I was trained to take good care of you. Nine, I've only been to the dealer. I've been coming here for years. These guys are great. Look around. The BMW, the Jag, the Volvo, they're all waiting for regular service. Well, the BMW has a little computer issue, but that's nothing we can't handle. Come on in. From regular maintenance to computer troubleshooting, trust the Global Car Care technicians with your import, diesel-powered, or domestic vehicle. Global Car Care. They speak your car's language. Danke schön. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. DA Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at DA Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Sixteen minutes past the hour here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley for this Wednesday. Clouds and uh, temperature in the upper 20s today. We're at 18 in downtown Wenatchee. Time for sports news. February is here, which means spring is near. Believe it or not, pitchers and catchers for the Mariners will report to spring training in Peoria, Arizona in just 11 days. Today is the media day at T-Mobile Park. You can watch that live on the Mariners' YouTube channel starting at 10 o'clock this morning. Of course, the buzz will be all about Julio Rodriguez being named the American League Rookie of the Year last year. This is what uh, Julio had to say at his award reception this past weekend. Good night, everybody. Man. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I've, first, I want to thank God. I feel like without Him, like I wouldn't have been here. Like I feel like really blessed for all the opportunity He put into my into my role that I was able to take advantage of it. I want to thank the baseball writers too for voting for me. Thank you guys. That was very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to I want to thank my family. I feel like that's my core support. I feel like that's the people that went that, that was with me since day one. Uh, my agents, my support team, everybody that made sure that things are lined up for me. That I was uh, made sure that I'm, I'm training with the right people, doing the right thing. I was guiding me from the right direction. I feel like without them, I would not be here right now. And I should say, like I asked a lot of questions. A lot of good players around the league. Oliver, JB. Goldsmith, Sandy, Judge, and I want to thank them too because they supported me on that. They helped me also become who I am today. Uh, I want to say a quick shout out to my hometown, Loma de Cabrera. It's a small town in the Dominican Republic. It's just for me to be here from that small town, it's very special. There was another rookie of the year, Rafael Foucault. Like, I know he had the same feeling, just coming from this small town, 20,000 people, and being standing at this stage right now. It's, it's just pretty memorable. It's a really long road, and I'm happy that how far I've become. And for all those young guys out there, for all those young guys out there, I just really hope that there's other guys that come, that come and do this and feel motivated by my role, too. I just hope that they keep achieving new heights and they also take the game to the next level just playing the, by playing the game in the right way, by having fun with it, and just keep representing their families. Like, don't let anybody set your limits. Don't let anybody tell you you cannot do it. Look at my example, 20,000 people, and I'm here in front of you guys. Feel really blessed for that, and don't let anybody set your limits. Thank you, guys. All right, there you go, Julio Rodriguez. First full squad workout is coming up on February 21st. The first Cactus League games will be 23 days from now. Yes, February 1st, but uh, you can start feeling spring already. Well, let's check the Les Schwab Prep basketball scoreboard from last night as the regular season came to an end for some of our teams in the region. The Chelan girls celebrated senior night and got off to a slow start against visiting OMAC. Despite 14 points from senior Kyra Sandoval and 10 from senior Jocelyn Simmons, Chelan fell 52-38 to other action last night. Grandview handled the Efreda 72-34. Bridgeport topped Manson 46-39. Okanagan 
Lincoln down Brewster 60 to 24. Lake Roosevelt top Tenasque at 59 48. Liberty Bell beat Oroville 37 to 28. So here's the final standings for the Central Washington 2B Girls League. Okanagan is the league champ, finishing a perfect 10 0. Brewster gets the number two seed to the District 6 tournament at 7 and 3. Lake Roosevelt is third, also 7 and 3. Bridgeport fourth, Tenasque at sixth. Liberty Bell wins. Uh, Liberty Bell's win over Orville last night means Mountain Lions and Hornets will have to play a play-in game, and we just got confirmation on that. That'll be tomorrow in Brewster, and it will be two eight-minute halves with a five-minute uh, halftime. Uh, so that's happening in Brewster tomorrow. There, the, the again, that would uh, the winner of that game would go on to face Lake Roosevelt Saturday in the first round of the District Six uh, tournament at six o'clock. Uh, Uriah, if you can get to, there, we go. Uh, the other first round game will have Bridgeport at Tenasca. The Tigers get to host because they beat the Mustangs during the regular season. Brewster and Okanagan awaiting the Wings for the second round at Omak High School. That for the girls would be next Tuesday. Other girls play last night. Most Lake. Christian had no trouble with Riverside Christian, winning 64 to seven or 64-17. Pateras clobbered Cascade Christian 48 to eight. Soap Lake edged any at 34-33. Waterville Mansfield won on the road at Wilson Creek last night, 66 to 27. Turning to the Les Schwab Prep Boys basketball scoreboard, Cashmere eked out a 69-63 win over Cascade last night as Chelan celebrated its five seniors. It was the play of Omac senior Jovan Mercado with 28 points and sophomore Tegan Mull with 17 points. That made the difference. Pioneers win it 79-54. The Goats were led by senior Braden Boyd with 19 points last night. Grandview down to Fred at 77-51. Uh, for the Bees, Brewster beat Okanagan 69-54. Lake Roosevelt topped Tenasca at 70-54. Manson stopped Bridgeport 44-38. Liberty Bell dumped Oroville 65-36. So the final standings for the Central Washington 2B League has Lake Roosevelt taking the league title with Brewster second and Liberty Bell third. Okanagan to Basket, Manson, and Bridgeport round out the playoff eligible teams, which, by the way, begins on Saturday with Manson at Okanagan at 6, while Liberty Bell hosts Tenasket. The winners will advance to face Brewster and Lake Roosevelt in the second round that's next Wednesday at Omak High School. Other boys basketball action last night. Riverside Christian upset Moses Lake Christians 56-55. Pateras popped Cascade Christian 60-13. Eddie at Edge Soap Lake 51-50. Waterville Mansfield won their second straight downing Wilson Creek on the road last night. 65 to 28. That's a look at sports news here at 23 minutes past the hour on Wake Up with Anchi Valley. Uh, by the way, we have more basketball coming up Saturday here on the NCW Live Channel. We'll have Eastmont and Eisenhower as we get towards the latter portions of the season for the Big Nine. The uh, girls play early at 4:45. The boys at 6:30. We'll have that live with Grant and yours truly here on the NCW Live Channel. Well, before we get to the day in history and and uh, obscure holidays and all that kind of fun stuff, we got to do the morning slurp. So grab your Joe. Grab your coffee, grab your water, grab whatever. Yeah, hopefully it's an open container, though, because, you know, uh, doing the morning slurp with a straw doesn't really work. <laughs> so here you go, morning slurp for this first day of February. Mm. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Obscure holiday. Well, today is the first day of February, and that means it's the first day of a lot of things. It's the first day of Black History Month. It's National Get Up Day, National Serpent Day to celebrate those snakes out there, National Girls and Women's in Sport Day. Uh, we celebrated that with Haley Van Lith here a few years ago. It's the beginning of National Patient Recognition Week. It's the start of National Cancer Prevention Month, National Fasting February, if you don't want to eat anything, National Self-Check Month, Free and Open Source Software Month, <laughs> and Affair to Remember Month. Now it's about the movie, not you. And uh, it's also Canned Food Month. Now today is also National Freedom Day. That is a holiday that celebrates Abraham Lincoln's signing of the 13th Amendment on this day in 1865, which outlawed slavery. The law didn't actually become ratified until December 6, some 10 months later. It was Richard Wright who lobbied Congress to make the 1st of February a National Freedom Day. It wasn't until in 1948, after Wright died, that President Truman would sign the proclamation making today National Freedom Day. Now, today is also another strange day. Today is the start of Move Your Sofa Off the Wall Month. Now, the interesting part about that is, and you see the this, this shot behind me here with the uh, two people smiling as they move a couch. 
The strange thing, I, I did a little search for images of people moving a couch, and every single one of those images, people were smiling. Now, every time I've moved a couch with my wife, I have not been smiling. <laughs> now, the idea behind Move Your Sofa Away From The Wall month is that it's time to clean underneath your furniture. And uh, my wife is also not happy about <clears throat> that because then she discovers that you're eating in the living room again. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, of course, you know, when you move the couch and move the sofa, or as my grandmother used to call it, the Davenport, um, <laughs> uh, have a feeling that that might also mean your spouse has uh, plans for moving other furniture around the living room as well. So today, move the sofa away from the wall day. Today in history, first day of uh, February, and it is a, a solemn day today. Space Shuttle Columbia disaster happened on this day in 2003. During STS-107 mission, Space Shuttle Columbia disintegrated as it re-entered the atmosphere over Texas, killing all seven astronauts on board. The mission was the second Space Shuttle program to end in disaster, a disaster after the Space Shuttle Challenger uh, happened in 1986, which killed all seven crew members during ascent. This, this is sobering. This is CNN's coverage of mission control in Houston at the time of this accident that happened on this date back in 2003. In Columbia, Houston, we see your tire pressure messages and we did not copy your last. Roger. Uh, Columbia, Houston, UHF comm check. Capcom, uh, Charlie Hobaugh calling uh, Columbia on UHF frequency as it approaches uh, the Merritt Island tracking station range in Florida. Twelve and a half minutes to touch down according to uh, clocks and mission control. Columbia, Houston, UHF comm check. Houston, UHF comm check. Communications uh, with Columbia were lost at about 8 a.m. Central Time, about uh, 10, 10 minutes ago. Ugh. Uh, you can just, I mean, pit of the stomach feel that. Lost on this day were Commander Rich Husband, Pilot William McCool, Mission Specialist Michael Anderson, uh, Kalpana Chawla, Mission Specialist David Brown, Mission Specialist Laura Clark, and Payload Specialist Ilan Ramon. All seven dead, and that basically ended the space shuttle program here in the United States. Birthdays today for this 1st of February. William Clark Gable, born on this date in 1901 in Cadiz, Ohio. Regarded as the king of Hollywood, Clark was uh, the leading man in more than 60 motion pictures over three decades. Gable considered one of the most consistent box office performers in history. He won an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Fa uh, Frank Capra's It Happened One Night and was nominated twice more. He's also arguably best known for his role as Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind opposite Vivian Lee. He died at the young age of 59 in 1960. Larry Marie Presley, born on this date in 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee, the only child of Elvis Presley, conducted a long career in the music business and has issued several albums and videos. Her work as a vocalist and lyricist has ranged across rock, country, blues, and folk. She died just 
less than a month ago, she uh, had a heart attack. Died. She should have been 55 today. And uh, happy 29th birthday to Harry Styles. Got to give a nod to the youngsters out there. Uh, Harry gained international fame as uh, one of the members of the Irish-British boy band One Direction. The band was formed in a British talent show, The X Factor. Later, he released a... Uh, a self-titled solo album in 2017, a single as it was, most streamed song globally on Spotify this past year. Happy birthday to Harry Styles. There you go. That's a look at birthdays in this day in history. And we have Mike McNaughty coming up and also my dad. We're going to add a little levity to the morning program here. It's all coming up on Wake Up with Angie Valley. Is your recliner as comfortable as this? Does it have lumbar support? The new technology in power recliners is simply amazing. Hi, can I help you? Well, yes, I was just telling my friends. Oh, about the great selection of recliners we have here at Boswell's? It's true. We have everything from pushback recliners to power recliners with all the latest features. Boswell's Furniture on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dix Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing, and they service all major brands of HVAC units. At Local Myth Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. McNutty and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, advertisers, let me tell you this. If you start your radio ad with some fast-talking auction-type guy giving the required legal disclaimer at the beginning of the ad instead of at the end, what I hear is, is we got something to hide. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. A radio ad that starts with, you of this product may cause a dirty heartburn or arthritis and suddenly death, and that goes on in a slower voice that tells you how great their product is. Now, I ain't buying it. No how, no way. If you start your ad with some fast talking guy with the legal disclaimer at the beginning, I don't think so. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. We were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And our kids still talk about that. I go back now, too, and I think about all those great days and great times. The neat thing is that we can go back in today and still enjoy the same quality food that we enjoyed 50 years ago. That's legendary. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Spring is more than just a time to clean. It's your time to renew, recharge, and spend time with the people you love. At Merry Maids, our cleaning services go beyond the basic services and provide you with a comprehensive clean that will re-energize your home and enhance your life. From everyday routine cleaning or deep cleanings, Merry Maids professional team members can provide you with an unrivaled experience. Call Merry Maids to schedule your cleaning today.
Well, thanks for joining us. And when I say us, I'm referring to myself and my dad, Dave Grandstrom. I wanted to bring dad in here to uh, talk a little bit about what, uh, well, what made him, which eventually made me, uh, including growing up and, and a place called the Finn Settlement. Sounds like a magical land. I don't know, magic, <laughs> I don't know if that works so well. but Black magic, perhaps. <laughs> uh, dad just turned 80. 80. Mm -hmm. How's that feel? Well, let's see. At, at this uh, stage of my life, I'm proud to be an old man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, because I was thinking about this when you were a kid in probably the 50s. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a lot of 80-year-olds walking around. No, uh, there weren't, especially in our family. Yeah. Uh, death came very early in our family for several generations, as a matter of fact. And um, my mother lived to be 80. And uh, she set the all-time record, except for Art Granstrom, who lived to be 99 years, 11 months, and two weeks. Yeah, he almost made the century mark. He certainly did. We gave him credit for it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I bought a bunch of signs <laughs> for his birthday, and he died, and I burned them. Um, so, let's see, 1943, right? Right. Born mm -hmm. in 1943, January 5th. And you were born in Seattle, right? Uh, Tacoma. Tacoma. Yep. Okay, How? Uh, why Tacoma? And where were your... your your parents, you guys lived in the Finn Settlement at the time or not? No, no. Uh, my dad was working in the shipyards in Tacoma uh, and when because things were slow in the, in the logging industry. So he was down there with his brother, uh, uh, Joe Granstrom, and they were both working in the shipyard. And uh, I was born down there, but then he was drafted at the, uh, almost the same time. Uh, World War II, of course, was in full swing at the time. And so they moved immediately to the Finn Settlement. And uh, Joe, his brother, was shipped, complete with his family, by ship to Pearl Harbor. And he worked the remainder of the war lifting the fleet from the bottom and working on those ships and putting them back out to sea. And my father went into the Army. Now, where did he train at? He trained at Fort Lewis, and then he was sent down to Bend, Oregon. I didn't even realize until I read some letters that I've recently found from, that he wrote to my mother when he was in the Army. Wow. Wow. And evidently, uh, this is when I was about a year old, and he was already in the service. Um, evidently, I was uh, being chased by a wooden spoon uh, <laughs> at the time because um, evidently my mother was complaining to him by mail. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, because, you know, you didn't necessarily have the phone. Well, you didn't have the phones in the Finn Settlement. That there time, were right? Nope. The only phone in the Finn Settlement, even when I'm old enough to remember, was a fire line that they had that went to my Uncle Jack's house. And it was one of those phones that I got to use that had the crank. The operator answered the phone and asked who you wanted to speak with. And uh, that, they took that out. Then from that point on, and this would have been the late 40s, we had no phones at all until I was gone to college. Wow. The telephones were installed in the, in the 60s. Now we should we should kind of back up a little bit this okay. whole Finn settlement thing. Uh, Western Washington we're referring to. Right. If you look on a map, I don't think you're going to see anything on a map that says Finn settlement. No, uh, it would have to be a, a map from the Skagit County Historical Society. Okay. And so then the it would be listed. Finn settlement is a place uh, east of the mount, east in the foothills of the Cascades of Mount Vernon, probably the closest town. Your actual mailing address is Mount Vernon, is although we claimed Cedar Woolley before we'd ever claim Mount Vernon. Oh, heavens, yes, <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> Cedar Woolley is the school district. Right. Has, has been forever, I think. Nope, oh, nope, no. No. Nope. Uh, originally, the school district was Arlington. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, this dates clear back to, I, I'm not sure that they had established the county lines yet, and there was no road to Big Lake to Mount Vernon, and the Finn Settlement is actually southeast of Mount Vernon. And, and uh, if you check your speedometer, it's closer to the Safeway store in Arlington than it is to downtown Mount Vernon uh, or if, to Cedar Woolley. If you travel today on Highway 9 mm -hmm. uh, north of Arlington, you'll see a, a turn that says the Finn Settlement Road. Right. Uh, Snohomish County side is called the Finn Settlement Road. On the Skagit County side, it's called the Grandstrom Road right. because our relatives kind of settled that area. Right? Your great-great-grandfather. Uh, help construct that road and as a matter of fact uh, my first cousin Mary uh, did the family history and and on both sides of the family actually my maternal or paternal uh, grandmother uh, her side too, the Prather side but she did ours 
and discovered that uh, our family had and probably still has filed with Snohomish County and Skagit County uh, a road right of way. And so the, the Granstrom Road was built on Charles Granstrom's right of way. Interesting. Right. And now, one of the old Finns before he passed away uh, had me drive him out there and he showed me where the original uh, uh, line would have gone. And now on the Snohomish County side, they've deviated uh, for the end of the road. But previously, it cut down through what now is uh, would be going across some private properties there. Okay. All right. right. Um, and for kind of, you know, the, the general history of it all, this is uh, part of the immigration that happened uh, from Finland and Sweden and, right. and the Scandinavian countries coming to America and uh, carrying on traditions that, that happened back in the old country. And they moved west where logging was big and logging tracks were, or, were given and right. logging deeds, I guess you, should, right. you could say. And the, uh, the great, great granddad was first in California, which is now Beverly Hills. And he had a, a landscaping business and somehow people got a hold of him, and I assume that it was actually his brother Isaac who got a hold of him and said, oh, you got to come up here, because he did not like the climate. He said, you got to move up here because the climate and the landscape is very much like the homeland in Finland. And uh, our family originated from a valley that's right on the Finnish-Swedish border. And the great-great-granddad was a Swede, but he'd married a Finn lady. And the people who lived there spoke both languages fluently anyway. Mm -hmm. So he came up and, and got a 160-acre land grant, at which he had to make the improvements on. But the major thing at the time was salvaging uh, cedar because the country had been full of gigantic cedar trees and then there had been a forest fire. But the remaining trees were all these cedar snags. And they made excellent things. And, of course, the cedar of the day was a, a primary building tool. So they, they harvested four foot long uh, cedar bolts. And so great grandpa moved up right. and the logging world continued for the Grandstroms, right. uh, which eventually landed in your lap. How did, how did that happen and how young were you? Because grandpa, my grandpa, your dad, yep, Al, right. uh, was a logger and uh, you know, it just kind of was a family thing. So right. how did that go from him to you? Well. Uh, from, the, from the time I was uh, in my early teens, uh, my uncle Joe, after the war, uh, became a business for self logger called a Jippo in a day. And, uh, and uh, there, th there was a differentiation between a Jippo logger and a contract logger. Mm -hmm. And he happened to be a Jippo and then sometimes a contract logger, but he always was logging. And my father a lot, for, largely uh, worked uh, away from home in the woods for the highest dollar he could make. But uh, then he would come home and help his brother, uh, uh, you know, rig up and, and so on and so forth. So I got to work in the woods from the time I was uh, uh, an early teen. And then in my summers in high school, I spent in a logging camp in Alaska. When the other kids were swimming in the lake and playing grab butt with the girls, <laughs> I was in Alaska logging. <laughs> So um, it, it's interesting, too, you mentioned that you were born and your dad was in the military right away and, right. and served in the Army Corps of Engineers uh, with in World War II in the Pacific Theater and then came home and had to go to work right away. And, and right. you mentioned him being gone. He wasn't around much for you growing up, was he? No, uh, he had to quit high school when his dad died. Uh, so he was a logger for a long, long time. Uh, he was in the woods back in the day at the age of uh, 15. So, uh, no, he was gone. And uh, because my grandmother, his mother, uh, developed cancer. And uh, she uh, ended up in a rest home, uh, which at the time was covered with no insurances on the face of the earth. And, <coughs> pardon me, uh, cost a lot of money. So he worked it for the highest dollar to help pay the bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you mentioned the lack of insurance, and you know that's back in the day when you know, the family took care of the family. Right, and uh, in the fifties, Washington Iron Works in Seattle uh, started building a thing called a track loader, and it was uh, operated on tracks and later on tires also. But it was a machine that could both yard the logs in and load them on a truck, both. And he became skilled at that right from the get go. 
In fact... Uh, well, he was a machine operator right. in the war, too, right? <laughs> oh, he did everything. In, yeah. Yeah. So he, anything he, that that was mechanical, he knew everything about it. So to go from uh, driving a bulldozer, for example, rebuilding runways and stuff in the war to doing this kind of work in the woods, that seemed kind of natural. Then, right. right. Yeah. He was a combat engineer. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, yeah. So he started running these. In fact, when he was laid off in the winter and the snow periods, uh, Washington Ironworks hired him to go train people to run the machine. So he became an expert on Washington track loaders. Okay, so that, that, the good news was he was in demand, his skills were in demand. Bad news was he was gone a lot of the time. Right. So you growing up, obviously you had your mom, uh, your, you had two sisters that, that came along later, right. uh, one close to you, uh, Kay, and then Linda was much later. Um, but uh, male influence in your life then? I mean, you probably had the, the looming presence of, of your dad because of the letters <laughs> and everything else. Mm -hmm. But who was, a, who was a male influence for you growing up? My Uncle Joe uh, was right there. Um, Uncle and this Je is the Jippo logger that right. stayed close to mm -hmm. home. Uh, they <clears throat> lived next door. And uh, the brothers married sisters. My dad's brother, Joe, married Wait a minute, my this mother. is going to sound hillbilly-ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was brothers that married not their sisters. No. They married two women that happened to be sisters. Ha happened to be oh, sisters. Okay, all right. Which, actually, as you read in the history books, was pretty common back then. Right, I guess so. But uh, Joe was already uh, uh, courting my Aunt Millie uh, when my dad was working away from home again, way back then, before marriage. And... Uh, uh, some of the Finns were trying to court my mother, Sylvia, and uh, uh, Joe said, no, you wait for my brother to get home from the logging camp. And, and my mother told me this. Uh, she said, when he uh, arrived at the place, she said, now we're talking. <laughs> so <laughs> so the, uh, the Finn settlement, uh, named such because there was a lot of Finns that settled there? Yep, they... Uh, they were. They were Finns. Um, in fact, the only last name that uh, of two was Granstrom that was Swedish, and the rest were all Finns except for one other, and that was Danish. Uh, names like Kitla, uh, Hurala, uh, Lombola, uh, 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 Lotfa, and so forth. And one hill, which is nothing but Mackey, translated. Ah, I see. And my step-great-grandfather's name was Matt Kangas. And his real name was Mati Getu Kangas, which translated is into English strictly as Foxfield. Well, if he'd have changed his name to English, he'd have thought he's from England. Right, right. Now, the interesting part, uh, when you were young, you spoke Finn, right? Yes, I spoke, according to my mother, I spoke Finn better than English until I was five. And then Mrs. Hill, who was one of the old ladies in, uh, in the village, uh, died, and I guess it was a traumatic experience because I never spoke Finn again. I, I'm curious, are you remembering any Finn at this point? Uh, yeah, the verbiage I remember is all cursing. <laughs> <laughs> which, which brings us to a, another uh, interesting uh, part of this. Being in the, in the world of logging that mm -hmm. you were from a young age growing mm -hmm. up and, and being around that world, there tends to be a certain vernacular uh, with that particular <laughs> Highly endeavor. profane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why is that? Well, I have no idea why it is, but it's a fact. And so, from a young age, being around all these loggers, and on weekends before hunting season, there were gatherings in the Finn settlement to sight in rifles and drink lots of beer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my cousin Jack uh, and I would, uh, would listen to all the, the vernaculars and the stories and and uh, we would run and open beer for the guys, and they didn't notice that we'd take two swigs before we gave them the bottle <laughs> and so forth. You know, eight, nine years old, uh -huh. so what? Yeah, you know, so. yeah mm -hmm. important to point out bottles, not cans of oh, beer at that no, point. These are all bottles. Yeah, right. Stubbies. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Stubbies. Um, the interesting part about that, and of course, me growing up around this guy and uh, <laughs> being around the language mm -hmm. uh, kind of got me in some hot water at times in school because <laughs> I, I didn't know that you're not supposed to do, say those things at school uh, necessarily. But your education mm -hmm. uh, seemed to be kind of a dichotomy with the language. 
because you're you were a graduate bachelor of education, right. uh, teacher, mm -hmm. um, and uh, well read mm -hmm. and well spoken, but you use it at choice times. Right. Well, I could speak Tar Heel too, <laughs> which is a whole nother conversation. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Uh, not too far. In fact, a, a, a hill over from where the Finn settlement is, basically, right. is uh, Darrington. But you don't say and it that Ly way. Lyman and, and Hamilton right. and Concrete. Yeah, on the other uh, mm, side right. of, the, of the world. Mm -hmm. And you grew up with, well, and logging kind of lends itself to oh, yeah. a lot of, of uh, the, the uh, uh, Carolinas and right. people North from Car the Carolinas moving to yep. the Northwest to yep. partake of the logging world because right. they're logging in, in Carolinas as well. Absolutely. That's why they came. And so uh, that was, and I, and you know, going to school in the '80s, mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of the the dying embers of of the logging uh, industry at that time. But Cedar Woolley was a mm -hmm. harbinger for people in the logging world because right. that was the logging central, Skagit Steel, right there in downtown Cedar right, Woolley. Absolutely, maker of all kinds of equipment. Yep, that's very true. And uh, once again. Uh, the Tar Heels uh, lent to the vernaculars too because they had their own, their own language, to, so to speak. Um, one time when I was uh, logging for myself, I hired a, a young man named Hodgen, which is a common North Carolinian name, to uh, fall timber for me. And one time we were eating lunch and he came in. I said, Lonnie, I said, uh, is there any decent timber where you're falling? And he said, yeah, I said, there's some pillars by the age. Uh, meaning peelers by the cutting line. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, hmm. Which is uh, pulp, right? No, peelers. Oh, oh peelers. That's number one. Oh, number one. Okay. Yeah, right. Number one trees. <laughs> uh, peelers by the age. Well, and around here at the TV station, I ha will happen to, uh, you know, whip out a saying mm -hmm. that obviously came from you because the nut doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> and uh, they're like, where in the world did that come from? I'm like, well, I don't know. I, it must be my old man. Where did you pick up some of these sayings? Oh, largely from listening to the to the old guys, you know, and my father and my uncle. Mm -hmm. My uncle was vastly worse than my father for the <laughs> for the use of of these sayings and, and whatnot. But, well, um, it's interesting though because it's it's character, it's funny, mm -hmm. and you know you work in a world that's that's grease and grime and and not a lot of fun. Right. So you got to put humor in there somewhere, right? Right. Yeah. Well, you know if you, if. <laughs> If somebody had a car that the bumper was was shiny, they'd say, "Oh, that shines like a new nickel in a goat's." <laughs> you know. <laughs> and yeah. see, right away, the kids are going to watch this and they're going to be like, "Oh, yep, see, yeah, that, okay." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. You know, well, mm -hmm. and and what's funny though is that you could just say, "Wow, that bumper's shiny." Yeah. Right. You could just say that. Yeah. And but it no. kind of gets the same thing. But that humor comes through. <laughs> right. It's just like, wow, it's really slippery. No, yeah. you don't say that. Oh. What do you say instead? Oh, that's as slippery as goose, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or sour owl. Or now, sour, I, I don't know the difference yeah. between goose and sour owl. Is oh. one slipperier than the other? Oh, yeah, yeah. And goose is a lot bigger. <laughs> that, okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a, a time where there was a, a woman that walked by with a tight skirt on, and I think I remember you saying, yeah, that looks like two pigs fighting in a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either said two pigs or, or, or two bear cubs fighting in a blanket. Right, mm -hmm. right. Well, we uh, just had a chance to do some wrestling uh, broadcast last <laughs> right, night, and, right. and uh, the big fellows that finished it up, of course, that was very... Uh, uh, resemblance of two large bears that right. were uh, mm -hmm. yeah, fighting each other. Two eighty-five pounders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, two hundred eighty-five yeah, pounders. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to run out of time here, uh, but uh, you know, there's much more, of course, to these conversations that we could have. Oh, and, and yeah. we still have to. We're we're still supposed to combine on this book, by the way. And now right. that you're eighty, mm -hmm. we really got to get this done. I know. I know. And. And then we have all sorts of hunting stories. Oh, hunting stories share. and and commercial fishing stories. And, oh, and well, the, they're the, endless. The legendary uh, man who was my grandfather, Ben Bay, and some of the sayings that came out of him. Oh, as well. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't go hunting without with less than two fathoms of, of, of paper towels in your back because you might have yeah. to take a dump. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and by the way, for for the, those of you that are non-nautical, a fathom is six feet. 
Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> six feet. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, thanks for taking the time. Okay. All no right. problem. There you we go. we got lots more. Oh, I know. The old man here on the NCW Life yeah, Channel. Well. Badger Mountain Brewery is your cure for boredom. Jam Night Mondays. Trivia Wednesdays. Live Music Fridays. And Sunday Brunch. There's always something brewing at Badger Mountain. So come join the party. Hi, Wenatchee Valley. It's Ben and Eddie the Yeti with Columbia Cooling and Refrigeration. Now's the time to get your fireplaces clean and serviced. Don't forget the heat pumps and furnaces. We just added a service electrician to our team. Can we do panel change outs now? Yes, and other electrical work. We are a factory authorized Bryant dealer, whatever it takes. Whether you're hot or cold, our service is gold. Columbia Cooling and Refrigeration, 509-668-8108. Are you caught in a conflict with a family member, in the workplace, or with a neighbor or business? Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on topics like conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us at 509-888-0957 or www.wvdrc.org to learn more. Working with August Edge Real Estate, both sellers and buyers feel confident knowing they are in the hands of award-winning professionals. August Edge offers a 2% listing commission, which includes above standard service and technology. We offer high-tech 3D imagery, drone photos, local North Central Washington TV ads, and impressive smart flyer installed at your listing. The August Edge website also hosts your home with an interactive featured listing page. August Edge is professional, personable, and preferable. All right, gang. Yes, it is a winning Wednesday. A chance to win tickets to see the Wenatchee Wild as they close out the BCHL season at the Town Toyota Center. Get in today. We've got, let's see, uh, Pat, Christine, Bill, Evan, Leah, John, Craig, Colleen, Melinda, Gordon, John. There's many, many more. Are you in yet? If not, you need to enter. You can do so at winner at ncwlife.com. Winner at ncwlife.com. We'll announce a winner on Winning Wednesday coming up a little bit later on. Thanks to my dad for joining us here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to find out if Punxsutawney Phil is going to see a sat shadow. Uh, if it was here in the valley, I don't know if there'd be much of a shadow to see tomorrow. Let's look at that forecast. For today, we're looking at cloudy skies, high temperature... Uh, sponsoring our weather forecast here on the NCW Life Channel. As far as the weather today, cloudy skies and temperatures in the upper 20s, about 29, maybe 30 for the high today. Tonight, clouds, a low of, 20, of 19, and tomorrow we'll see maybe some clouds early and then sunny in the afternoon. So Punxsutawney Phil, if he were still, if we were still doing that Groundhog Festival at East Wenatchee, uh, it would be probably a non-shadowed type of morning, but we'll find out from the actual Punxsutawney Phil coming up tomorrow. 32, the expected high as we get into the end of the week, 35 on Friday with clouds, maybe a little rain or snow in the morning, then it'll uh, melt by the afternoon and whatever happens overnight, Saturday, Sunday, it's gonna melt uh, later in the day. 39 for the high on Saturday, 40 for the high on Sunday, as we head into next week. Look at that. 44. Gonna feel like spring. Don't let it fool you, though. National Weather Service says we're still looking at uh, colder temperatures and a lot more precipitation in our forecast. We are at 19 in downtown Wenatchee. As far as the mountain passes are concerned, good day to travel if you need to. Barren Drive for the most part. There is a traction advisory on, a, on a, in effect at Stevens Pass. Hey, don't forget, coming up next week here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, uh, we will introduce you to the top 10 candidates for the Apple Blossom Festival. I have their names right here. Had a chance to be part of a mock panel interview for the ladies yesterday. They are doing wonderfully. The top 10, I'm telling you, top to bottom, they're fantastic. 
week, and I don't envy the judges uh, come a week from Saturday. That's when we'll have the pageant here live on the NCW Life channel with our countdown coordination on February 11th at 6 o'clock, and then the pageant itself presented by Casimir Valley Bank at 7 o'clock right here on the NCW Life channel. Hey, have a safe Wednesday. First day of the month. Make it a good one, and we'll see you tomorrow here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley.